good morning and welcome to our update for this week. Um, you know, I've often wondered um, how Moses would have felt uh, when he saw the burning bush um, and the Lord said to him to take his sandals, his shoes off for the, where he stood was a holy ground. Uh, and the fact that um, this would have been a place where Moses would have been time and time again. This was a familiar territory. It was the same place where he has led this um, flock, the sheep of Jethro, over a period of time. So, um, as far as we know in the past, that nothing indicated that this was a holy ground. The sheep would have grazed freely. Um, Moses would have been familiar, nothing that is seemingly holy in this mundane setting. Yeah, the ship would have grazed, been allowed to secrete, do anything that a flock would do. But on this particular day of encounter, where God appears, he says to Moses, at this mundane place, it's become a holy ground. Holy ground not because of the specialness of the place, but because of the encounter, because of my presence. And it, it kind of affirms to me that you can have an encounter with God in your bedroom, in your kitchen, Wherever you do your mundane everyday life, amen, the God too can appear. Maybe to you not like a burning bush, but certainly make an appearance and transform the place into a place of encounter. And so this week, um, as I went to work and I traveled into the office, I sensed what a privilege it was to, to, it was a place of encounter, no doubt. And seemingly every day, it was as if God was already waiting for us to open the doors and walk into this place of encounter. And I felt this was a special, special place. Amen. And it has to be because of the need, the people that call daily, every single one of them brings a need which has to be met, not by us, but by the King of Kings. Amen. And it felt such a special place. Um, and so um, in this week's um, sharing, I want to share the story, the true story behind the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Um, our first song will be this week. You know, this is a true story of um, 150 years ago, 1872, uh, revival in Wales and um, people going out to all parts of the world as missionaries to evangelize. And um, from those missionaries, came missionaries from America, uh, Baptist missionaries, going to India. Uh, and um, they faced all sorts of opposition and all sorts of um, uh, terrible um, measures. And, uh, people who didn't want to know about this God. And sometimes as, um, as somebody who is working for God, as we will read in our Elijah, victories are few and far between. And even those kind of victories are, can meet counterattacks. And, and this place was no different. Uh, but as a child of God and as a, a messenger of God and as somebody who is working for God, what do you do when you seem to accomplish so little in the face of massive opposition? And people who just don't want to know, uh, I'm willing 
and an unaccepting of the message. You know, you, you feel like you're not making any inroads. And so um, in this particular place in, um, in India, Assam is called the tribe of Assam, the, 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 the missionaries did not make any inroads at all. And it's recorded that only one family actually came to Christ. So I'm sure the missionaries would have left that part of India very disheartened and very feeling like what what a failure. All these expenses and all this traveling of thousands of miles and achieving nothing. But you know this family that came to Christ was a man and his wife and the two children. And we are told um, the man's name uh, uh, we're told is Noxon. Amen. Uh, from Noxon from the uh, Garo, you know, and um, so happens that the the chief of the village wasn't happy with this uh, man's um, acceptance of a foreign god and a foreign religion. So the man was arrested with his family, and um, right, right before the gathering, the village gathering, the man was told to renounce this newfound religion and this new way of life. Um, upon his refusal, the chief ordered that his two children be killed right in front of him and for, to serve as a deterrent to everybody. Um, and, and, and the man's children were killed. And the, the chief gave him, out, um, gave him another chance and said, Now, unless you renounce this God, your wife will go the way of your children. You know, your children are gone, but I'll give you a chance with your wife to restart family if you renounce this God. And this man said the cross before me, you know, the world behind me. Still, I will follow. And um, his wife was killed in front of everybody. Uh, and uh, uh, and she joined the children in being killed. And uh, the chief said to the man, now you have a last chance. We want to eradicate this religion from us. And um, if you don't renounce, then it means you're going the way of your wife and your children. And to everybody's surprise, the man said, still I will follow. And so the man was killed along with his two children and his wife. But the fact that this was a gathering, it was meant to be a gathering to deter people from following foreign, foreign gods. God be praised. It, it turned out that actually the chief was touched by this man's determination and this man's um, uh, stubbornness in the face of threats and this man's uh, doggedness to follow this Jesus that the, 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 the chief decided we need to find out about this religion. We need to find out about this foreign God um, that's come these thousands of miles to which this family have just sold out their life to. And um, in doing that, the chief, the whole village was converted and they all came to Christ. For me, as a messenger of God, I believe that the last missionary that left the tribe of Assam, where this song originates, would have left feeling a failure because only one family came to Christ. On the ordinary level, human failures or human lack of human connectedness may be God's way of entry into people's hearts. Uh, the, the one, the one, the one, the one genuine, the one, the one that determinant remnant can be the catalyst uh, for the gospel to just spread. And so you and I, when we sing this song today, 
we sing it freely, but it cost somebody his life and his family's life. I have decided to follow Jesus. Uh, what is your decision? And then the, the basic question is, when you die, when you die in the end, when it's all done and dusted, and you are being carried to the mortuary or wherever, to the cemetery, what legacy are you going to leave behind? Is it one that will draw people towards the cross of Jesus? Or is it one that will push people away from the kingdom of God, from the unsay? Where people say, if this is what it means to be a Christian, I'm having nothing to do with it. Or, or will people say, I need to check out this God. God bless you. It's been fantastic. And I'll talk to you next week again. God bless you.